Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at Maya's tune shading, more particular their uh, tune outlines. So I currently have this scene set up and I've got some geometry here you can see. Um, let me go ahead and put on the perspective camera real quick. So it's just a uh, tank that I modeled and I actually um, started this model off inside of uh, Google SketchUp. I was trying Google SketchUp. I really like the uh, look that they have inside of that package and how it can draw a really nice uh, kind of technical drawing kind of illustration. Um, but I wasn't too impressed with the models. I did kick out a model uh, from Google SketchUp and I brought it into uh, Maya and the, the model was just, it produces really bad geometry for what I was looking for. So I had to go through Maya and I actually rebuilt everything and I'm trying to recreate this look that um, that I was seeing inside of Google SketchUp um, and I think I found a fairly decent combination for these things. So if I go um, back to the uh, the render camera and up the, open the render view, let me take a look at my uh, render settings and see how large I'm rendering. Okay, and I'll just do render uh, perspective do the current first camera that I have here. So I set up a um, a three-tone shader inside of Maya uh, for their for their tune shader that they have and you can get, get to control the colors that they have and uh, then I'm adding these tune outlines over the top of it. So I think it produces a, a really nice look um, but I wanted to make sure whenever I was uh, building uh, this out I wanted to basically have um, anywhere where I had hard edges, I wanted to create a uh, a line for the object, and then obviously anywhere where pieces intersect another piece, like you can see how this intersects here, uh, that will create a uh, a line there. And then you've got a maybe a little bit thicker profile line than the lines that are inside of here. So that was kind of the look that I was going for. So let me show you kind of how I set that up. So I'm going to go to the uh, the rendering menu subset here. And you can see tune. You can say uh, assign a fill shader. And I started with a um, let's see, shade brightness three tone is what I started off with. And if I click on this and right click and say material attributes, the material that I have assigned to it. After um, I put that together. Here's the uh, the shader that was created. So I actually have uh, more colors going on than um, just the three tone that was uh, st that we started off with. So it's pretty easy to add another tone inside of here. If I wanted to add one here, I just click there, and you can click on this little circle part and kind of s move this thing around. And if I gave this a color, let's say if I put this on red, then you can kind of see what's going on here in the shader. If I re-render this thing. Um, you'll be able to see the red color kind of coming in on this. So um, obviously the red is not uh, something that I'd want, but uh, I just want to kind of prove to you like how this uh, shader is working out. So we've got, it starts with a lighter color and as it moves away from the light, you know, wherever the light is the brightest, it's going to be at this end of the spectrum and, and then push down towards the darks here. So you can choose um, any colors that you want and you can kind of shift these things around to get uh, you know the darkest area to be a certain thickness and you know where that comes up to this next shade here going all the way up to um, I didn't put it at full white but if I wanted to add full white here at the very top I could I could do that pretty easily actually it looks like as if it is full white here let me check that um, that value so if I made this a little bit darker than just pure white. You can see that there. If I re-render, then I might get a little bit hotter highlight in certain areas, like this here. So this is this first color here in this pool, and then this is the uh, second color here. Um, but I actually don't really like that. So I'll take that away. You can, you can um, select some of these and I can't get rid of that one so I can just move it over here I can get rid of that here like that and I can choose the color and I'll put it back on the white and make sure it's white okay so now I want to re-render I think that should give a give a brighter highlight to that area there so you can you can add as many of these as you want um, and that's going to give you kind of some of that 
um, this hard edge kind of tune shading. Um, and then let's take a look at uh, adding the tune outlines. Okay, so you're going to want to select your, your object uh, that you see here. And then you're going to go to the rendering menu subset again and then say tune and say assign, assign outline. Um, you can make a brand new one. Um, and I've already got one here, so let me just go ahead and select this and say, uh, actually select the um, select the tank itself, which is this whole thing. Sorry about that. Okay, so select this, and then um, I'm going to take the tune lines, and I'm actually going to remove the tune outlines. So that's how you can get rid of the tune outlines on certain shapes. And let me just re-render and check that that has actually taken the lines off. Um, just because I'm going to build a new a new um, set, and I want to make sure it's not uh, conflicting with anything. Okay, so that's been removed. So again, I'm just going to select this um, top piece, and it's uh, in the hierarchy. Everything's kind of parented to that. So I'll go ahead and go back to the tune assign outline, and I'll say add new tune outline, and that'll create a new one for me. Um, I'll just maybe give this a name, V2 for version 2. Um, and you can see it should give you some tune lines in the uh, in the viewport right off the bat for you to kind of look at. So if we take a look at this tune line in the outliner and select it and then take a look at some of the um, some of the options for this. Um, this is uh, going to turn on these crease lines. This is actually the uh, hard edge stuff, so we're going to take a look at that. Uh, the profile lines can be paint effects or offset mesh, and I was using the paint effects. Um, I think this border lines, um, maybe let me check this one and just see. Yeah, so I have open edge for that, and that's a default. I was turning on this intersection lines, that's where if you get two pieces that run into each other, it'll create uh, an intersection line and uh, line width. I was using a line width of 0 0.08, um, but this is all going to depend on the uh, the size of your object in your scene. So you might want to have you might want to play around with this value. So this is going to give you like overall the thickest line that you can get for all these different things for profile, crease line, and border line. So this sets the overall thickness and then in each one of these things you'll get to kind of control a little bit more exactly what's going on with that. Um, so I wasn't really messing with any of this line in thinning and the line extend. Um, I can't remember if I turn on the occlusion with scale so I actually turn that off and the local occlusion that's just off on there. And I'll go to profile lines. I'm going to actually change this to be a different color. I'm going to make each one of these a different color so we can kind of pick apart what is what on here. So the crease lines, I'll make this a blue color. And uh, border lines, I'll make this green like this. Okay, so um, let me go ahead and just render this real quick. And you can kind of see what's going on in the viewport, but we want to kind of break this thing apart and maybe have a better looking uh, view of what these lines are actually doing. So, okay, um, here we go on this. Um, we've got the profile lines should give us uh, all around here, around the edge, and it's kind of um, looking like this is this this area is kind of sunk in and it's pushed in, so it's going to give us this edge here. Um, I also want these crease lines, which should be um, everywhere that uh, I, I would like it to be on these hard edges here. So I can take this crease angle minimum and drag that down to zero. And I'm just going to save this image with this right here, and I'm going to re-render. And if I've done this right, it should um, it should give me these new lines on everywhere where I have hard edges on my model. 
Okay, let's take a look at the options that are set for this one. Okay, so um, crease angle max, I'm going to put that at zero two. That's one thing I missed for that. And just re render. Okay, that's looking better, but I do, I am picking up um, a lot of these edges right in through here. So I'll just save that. Okay, this is starting to look better. Um, one thing for the profile lines, I turned off this smooth profile. I did notice that sometimes that doesn't follow exactly the exact shape of uh, whatever the object is if this is turned on. Um, so let me see the other option for this. Uh, I don't think there's anything else that I set for the, uh, the profile color lines. So re-render that. Okay, you can see that I'm getting a much better profile line now that I turned off the uh, the smooth profile um, on here. Let's scroll down and take a look at the intersection lines. Um, so it's barely visible. This is the only thing I have on here is this little black piece uh, right there. Um, let me see if I set anything on here. I've got this self intersect. Uh, if you turn that on, I believe that, uh, you know, if you have one, if this was one continuous object, it would still take a look at uh, the surfaces that are actually intersecting each other. Um, and I have just changed uh, some of the, uh, the, um, the line thickness, so we'll take a look at that as well. Also, um, I wanted to take a look at this line resampling to kind of take a look at getting a better quality lines. And so I actually turned everything on for that. Okay. And then what else did I set on here? The max segment length. Uh, I have that on 0 0.025. Okay. And let me just save this image and re render. Okay, I think the uh, the quality is starting to come up on the lines. Um, the next thing that I would do is kind of work on the um, the overall thickness that I was using for these different lines. So um, this just was uh, based off of some trial and error. Instead of me trying to fumble around with that, I'll just take a look at the values that I set uh, previously for this. So the overall line width, we already set that to 0 0.08. Um, then down here I had profile lines to 0.65, so I'll change that. And um, let's see here. And it is taking a little while because it actually rebuilds these lines in the viewport back here. I know it's not really visible, but you might notice a little bit of slowdown on that. So 0.4 for these lines, for the crease lines. And this is all, you know, your artistic discretion. You're just going to have to kind of try these out and see what the kind of look that you're going for. So border lines 0.3 and intersection lines 0 0.4. 0 0.3 and then this was uh, 0.4. Okay. And once that sets I will go ahead and store an image for this one and then re-render. Okay, so here's my final line work and final line quality. Um, you know, after you've set these things up, then it's going to be pretty easy for you to, you know, choose a color if you wanted these things to have color on them. Uh, if you don't, you can just drag this thing all the way down for each one. And it is taking a little bit of time to update these things. If you're going to update a bunch of values, you might want to turn this display and viewport off. So you can see it has to recalculate the um, the lines. So if I turn that off, I'll just drag the colors down. You can see everything's going to move a lot faster at that point. So I've got all my colors set to black. And then now I'll just say display and viewport if you want to see those things. Um, so I'll turn that back on and then uh, save one last image and do one more render. 
Okay, so here's the final render with the render quality, and I've basically just kind of emulated all the settings that I had before, but I wanted to take you through kind of real quickly and show you how you can set these values yourself and kind of tweak them to get different results because, uh, you know, maybe maybe you're not a big fan of the way that I've set up my lines and you want to do a, uh, a different, different kind of thickness uh, for everything. Uh, that is completely possible for you to do that. Um, so there's only one last thing that I kind of wanted to uh, show you for this tune line and that has to do with some of our render settings. Uh, that's actually, um, you know, in the render settings where you set up if you're going to render with uh, uh, Min Array or Maya software. It's actually right up in here. You can click this and if you go to um, there's a common tab and then under my software if you've got this set to my software um, at the very bottom there's this paint effects rendering options and if you go ahead and make sure that enable stroke renderings on and oversample oversample post filter um, I think that was helping me get a little bit better quality for the lines that I was uh, spitting out. So that's about it for this uh, section. Just wanted to show you how you can put on the the three-tone tune shader, um, tweak some of the colors for that to get whatever colors that you're looking for, and um, also set up this um, this line thickness and then try to get a better quality looking line. I guess the only last thing that I could probably tell you is maybe something about your lighting setup. On this lighting setup I have a pretty simple setup. It's uh, basically two lights. There's a um, there is a let me let me turn off the tune lines for this real quick because this is making it about impossible to paint around. So again, I'll just select the object, open up the uh, attribute editor, and turn off this display and viewport. So now I can tumble around. It is um, actually taking those lines and generating it like every frame, I believe. So that's why you get that massive slowdown whenever that's happening. Um, so again, this lighting setup is just one spotlight, and there is a point light uh, down below. Um, and basically for this light, I set up for it to use depth map shadows, the resolution is pretty pretty high, so it's 4096, and I took the filter size and drug it up to 5, so that kind of gives a little bit of a uh, softening effect to it. So you can see this is the type of shadows that it produces. So again, in that, um, that three-tone shader, which I added more colors to it, um, you can see if we select this thing here, and we take a look at this lowest in color, that's actually going to be anywhere where we have shadow, that's where what the shadow color is going to be for this. Um, so just something to keep in mind for that. Okay, so I hope this was uh, informative and enough for you to start maybe looking at the possibilities of how you can set up your own tune lines and start to get the kind of quality that you're looking for in your renders.